By the way, this is uh, Jose Mariano Luján from the University of Murcia. Um, I'm here with a couple of colleagues, uh, Juanjo, uh, Meroño, Raúl, Sánchez, and Sabina del Rey. Um, also, um, we have some folks from the University of Texas who has also been working uh, to make this both um, um, to bring it to life. <laughs> so uh, if they want to introduce themselves, that would be excellent. Hi, I'm uh, Chris Schauer from uh, Texas State University. We have uh, a couple other colleagues here. Uh, we have Salwa and uh, Q. Great. Thanks. So um, um, I will love to hear if um, anyone of you want to present themselves. Um, feel free to. Uh, I think everyone can use the microphone, so we can do a quick uh, round. Hello, uh, hey, this is Steve Swinsberg, um, developer on the um, on the new book project. Hi, Steve. Thanks for joining. Thanks, guys. Hi, th this is Jeff. Sorry, I had to uh, had to get out a big blue button and get back in. So I, I probably missed some of what you were saying, Jose. But um, but good morning. So uh, I'm the project manager for the Gradebook Enhancements project. And this is Jeff. Yeah, hi Jeff, thanks for joining also. Hi. We have uh, Laura on the chat from the University of Notre Dame. Hi Laura. Hey, I'm Will Humphreys, I'm a developer at Tufts and uh, we use Gradebook 2. So just kind of checking in to see what's going on. Hi there. Uh, which university? Sorry. Tufts University. Oh, okay. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah, we have Diego from Escriba. Hani. Hi, Diego. Also. All right. So if um, there is anyone else, um, we can go ahead. So actually okay. we have, hey, Jose, this is Jeff. Yeah. So we have Pey Peyton Giles is trying to join in. Actually, what's the, um, what's the password for the room? I actually had it saved, but we just want to get him in. I think it's uh, Aperio. Okay, lower lowercase? Yes, I think, I believe okay. so. Yeah. Great, I'll have him try it again. All right, so um, I'll say it again in case uh, anyone missed it, but there is an um, agenda that we will be uh, following. It's a Google Doc. I'll paste it in the chat. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to start by there. Uh, so um, uh, the agenda, we will um, make a brief in introduction, which is all of this that we are saying right now. And then we will go through a gap analysis between Gradebook 2 and Gradebook 1 that uh, our colleague Raul um, the help of uh, some other folks and also people from Texas. Um, we've been working on that. Um, then we will <clears throat> try, this is an, uh, an open space <clears throat> where anyone uh, can be typing what they find that um, needs to be done in Gradebook 1 or Gradebook NG, we'll discuss that later, uh, to close the gap between Gradebook 2 and, um, and any of those gradebooks. Um, and then, yeah, we have um, some information that uh, Juan Homeronio uh, have worked on to make Gradebook 2 uh, work in the latest uh, version of uh, Trunk. And so we will cover also that. And then, um, yeah, any, any information that you have or, the, or that you know about uh, can be linked at the last uh, agenda item to help anyone 
uh, going through this uh, process. So yeah, so the first um, um, point is the uh, uh, yeah institutions using Gradebook too. Well, we were uh, we're from the University of Murcia and we've been using Gradebook too uh, for over five years now. Um, we actually thought that we were uh, quite long until the latest um, um, Sakai um, Great Enhancement uh, webinar, where there was a quick poll uh, that was launched uh, during the webinar, and 37% uh, 37 uh, percentage of the people that attended that webinar say that they were using Gradebook 2. So that was uh, quite surprising for, for us. So that's why uh, that motivated us to open this discussion and to try to uh, find out who else was interested in in going from Gradebook 2 to, to Gradebook 1 or ND. Um, there is a link there to the uh, an outdated list of institutions using Gradebook 2. Uh, I we will encourage you to update the link because that will be helpful for for everyone. Uh, I will, I'm also going to start sharing my uh -oh. my screen. Let me see. So that we can go through the document together. Can anyone see my screen? I'm not seeing any. No. All right. Yeah, not yet. Okay. It seems like it will be there in a minute. All right, so it should be working now. Um, hopefully you see the the Google Doc that I was talking about. Okay, so um, yeah, there is a link um, that takes you to the uh, Confluence where there is a list of institutions um, that are supposed to be using Gradebook 2 uh, right now, but this is really um, well, there is some information has been updated recently, but I think there is a, a lot of old information also. So it would be helpful if you know someone that is using Gradebook to, to update this uh, information. Uh, we encourage you to, to do so. Um, yeah, so um, then we have here, um, we have a space for um, if your institution is considering uh, moving from Gradebook 2 to Gradebook 1 or Gradebook NG, um, please add your name. That would be also um, helpful to um, try to uh, keep contact with, with each other. Um, yeah, so now we're going to go through the gap analysis, which probably is what interests you uh, to, to most of you. So we're here now. Um, yeah, here it only says that please do I update the document if you um, feel that there is something that you can add or if you, there is a better screenshot that describes um, what is in it eaten. Um, we will really appreciate um, collaboration from, from anyone. So yeah, I go uh, point by point, but um, yeah, please stop me at any time or help me out if you see that my English is not working very well. <laughs> So, yeah, so the first one, um, well, into here, if, is there any question? I was not checking the the chat, but I don't see anything in the chat. So, yeah, so I'll go ahead and start with the, with the document. So the first point is that the um, Gradebook 1, no, well, Gradebook 2 includes um, Wait, weighted items, uh, but Gradebook 1 does not. Um, I'm sure that um, Chris will complement this by the queries that they've executed in Texas State because they have some information about how many users from their university were actually using this feature 
in gradebook 2 and that will be something that they will probably need in gradebook 1 or they will have trouble if they move to to gradebook 1 here is a screenshot of how uh, gradebook 2 handles uh, this configuration so we have uh, grade items like grade 1 grade 2 and you can set different percentage for within the, the category. So we have here a, an example. As I said, like, please feel free to comment here or uh, yeah, anything that would be helpful. Or if you know that a use case that it's really relevant for your institution um, will suffer a lot if you remove that from uh, to, uh, to your instructors, that will be also uh, interesting information. So the second point is the, about the final grade. Well, gradebook one um, needs um, does not allow to include an item in to the calculation of the final grade if that item is not uh, um, public to to students. I mean, if it's not visible to students. Um, yeah, we were discussing this locally, and this is uh, this would be uh, a problem for instructors because sometimes they what they do is that they create all the items, they um, make them visible to students at the beginning of the course, then they hide them so that they can introduce the grades, and then they see the final grade calculation and everything, and then they make them visible. So without uh, in Gradebook 1, without making them visible, instructor won't be able to see the the, um, the final grade of the student because there is a, a condition between, as you can see in the screenshot, you need to check the first release this item to students before being able to check, include this item in, in the course grade calculations. So, yeah, it's in some comments, questions. This. Yeah, there is a question on the document. Does anyone know the background to this? Is there an academic use case for this? Could be fixed in the API, maybe. Okay, interesting question. I don't have such uh, information. So if anyone on the call does have that information, that would be excellent. If not, we'll probably end up with, um, or it would be great to end up with some question that we can afterwards send to the, that list to see if some other people from the community are able to, to answer them. Yeah, uh, just one comment on that. I'm, I'm not sure what the academic use case is, it, is for, but we have about uh, a number of items in there and almost half of our users have at least one item in the system where it's not released to the student, but it's included in the final grade. Um, I'm not sure why they're doing it, but it seems like a lot of people are doing it, so. Yeah, this this is Jeff. I could I could be wrong about this, so maybe somebody else on the call knows. But I think at some point in Gradebook One history, you were allowed to do that, and it was actually changed um, so that you needed to release it to the student in order to include it in course grade calculation. And it might have been done for transparency, but but I'm not positive about that. Yeah. Yeah. How do you spell transparency? <laughs> um, I think I'm the worst. English, I'm the worst English speller. I don't know why you asked me, but <laughs> yeah. Thanks. All right. Yeah, yeah but I, I think I think if I think if we were to check the Jira history, um, I mean maybe that was done 
three years ago, if if memory serves. But we could we could check Jira on that. All right. Thanks. Okay. So uh, moving along, we go to the um, and thanks for your questions. Um, I do appreciate them. So um, yeah, point number three. It's about the um, great book item point value. <laughs> So this, um, it's also very, well, I don't know about the importance of, of that, but um, great book too. If, um, if you want to change the um, number of um, items, uh, the, the points that a great book item is, uh, is worth, um, the, tot the total number of, of points, um, it offers you the possibility to recalculate the um, the the grades that you already have, so yeah, so, I mean, it seems something interesting. Uh, Great book one does not include that option, so we have here uh, an example. So and this is this these screenshots are from Great book one. So in the first one we have a, a, the grade one is worth ten points, and yeah. And there is a, a student that has a seven, and then you modify the total points to twenty, and then the student still have a uh, seven. Um, grade book two allows you to rescale that uh, those grades from the students. So we think it's something also interesting. Yeah, about the fourth uh, point is about section awareness. Um, this uh, screenshot is from the JIRA that is uh, listed in the document. Um, yeah, Gradebook 1, we could say that is more section aware than Gradebook 2 because um, if you have a student who is enrolled in only one section, um, in both Gradebook 1 and Gradebook 2, he, that student will be able to see um, items, grade items from other sections. Uh, but the difference is that Gradebook 1, if, that, if those items from other sections come from an external tool, Gradebook 1 does not show those items to the students. But Gradebook, Gradebook 2 uh, shows all the items. So this point, let's say that Gradebook 1 will win because we, what we would like to see is that um, either of them, Gradebook 1, Gradebook NG, or Gradebook 2, uh, does not show uh, items that are not related to a student who is enrolled in a section that is not related to those items. I'm here. There is a question coming up on the document. Do we know if the score is calculated removing the items where you don't have access? know for sure, at least in Gradebook 2, is that um, if the student, let's say the student belongs to section A, and there is also section, section B and section C, um, if the student, the student will see grades from sections B or C, but if um, the instructor or TA does not introduce a grade for the student um, in those items, uh, it will not affect um, his final grade. But this is really important. Um, it must, the, the grade, the, those items must have the configuration to, um, um, let's see how it is in English. Uh, 
I'll let you know in a second. Here, the set and grade item to zero. So instructor have to make sure that for those sections B and C, he does not check um, this option because if he selects this option, um, it could affect the final grade of a student being only in section A. So going back to the question. Here. Here, section awareness. Probably not the answer to your question. Anyone has some more information about this or how grade one handles this? Okay, so we move along. We'll try to answer those questions later. Yeah, so uh, point number five, this was a test that was done by uh, Raul. Uh, he tested um, Gradebook 1 and Gradebook 2 uh, a couple of months ago uh, in the same instance. And he saw that um, the structure and the grades were um, remained the same, except for the um, Weight with uh, the weight of an of an item within a category, which uh, because gradebook one doesn't allow that um, that information get lost. So this was just some more information that we added to to the document. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, another difference uh, differentiation from gradebook one and gradebook two. Gradebook one does have more exporting and importing uh, uh, possibilities. So it allows to export a PDF of a, like a report of a different students and their final grades, uh, which Gradebook 2 does not allow that. It also introduces a new concept, the, um, the doc. Uh, loading doc to import the grades uh, when you try to import grades from a from an Excel, for example. Um, this does not happen in Gradebook 2. And also, um, here is a, a important differentiation, and is that when you try to import an Excel file, um, you are not able to export more than one grade at a time. So you have to be uh, doing the import uh, like several times. And also the gradebook item point value get lost, which uh, could be a problem. This is in, in gradebook one. And another differentiation is that in gradebook one, you are not able to import uh, or export a full uh, gradebook extractor, which uh, you are able in gradebook two. And we are aware that that's been used uh, quite a lot when instructors want to reuse the extractor from one semester to, to the other. Okay, keep on moving. If there is any question, please stop me. And if there is anything on the chat, I will I really appreciate if 
somebody else can be asking the questions of the, of the chat so that everyone can see them. Okay, um, point number seven. This is about the total percentage. Um, Gradebook 2 does allow to have to go over 100. Not sure if this is something that um, this use case is common. We are aware that some people are using it uh, when they try to, when they have re-exams, they, they tend to go over the percentage and they don't grade um, those students in like in the other exam and they make sure that they don't have selected the set um, blank count blank blanks at zero and they are able to calculate in gradebook to a final grade um, by go, going over the the 100 uh, percentage um, yeah but as I say I'm not sure if this use case will be something really important for, for the community. Uh, we are aware that some people are using it, but not sure if that's, that's the proper way to, to use Gradebook 2. OK, keep on going. Yeah, number eight, it's about, um, yeah, that there is more grading possibilities in Gradebook 2. Uh, I mean, in Gradebook 1 than in, than in Gradebook 2. So, yeah, there is like some average. You have uh, the category, um, the student, the average per category, which uh, that information is not um, is not in, like, present in, in Gradebook Two. Uh, we have a, a question from the from the last yep. one. Uh, asking is is that the same as using an extra credit category on number seven on the weighted categories um i think it's i think it's different yeah it's different this is yeah this is just that you go over the percentage and gradebook 2 allows that so if you know how the calculations are being handled then you can yeah maybe get more out of gradebook 2 but this is not related to extra credit. Yeah. Thanks for, for the question. Okay. So, yeah. So here, this one was that there's more uh, information provided by Gradebook One uh, in terms of uh, averages. Uh, like yeah from categories and the grades um, yeah so that, that's good <laughs> um yeah number nine yeah also that you have some more uh, also some more uh, possibilities in gradebook one uh, if you see the screenshot here um the one in the middle uh, that is with the circle, and um, that's provided by Gradebook 2, but the other two are not provided by Gradebook uh, 2. So that's also good. It's new functionality uh, that will come along with uh, Gradebook 1. Okay, and this is just uh, yeah something that we, that we thought that it was worth mentioning. Uh, in Gradebook 2, it's uh, easier to del delete a uh, grade item. It's easier than in, than in Gradebook 1. It says here in the comment that this is addressed by Gradebook NG. Not sure if we added this comment. Uh, so if Jeff or Steve can... Okay, that's great. Thanks, Steve. All right. Yeah, so this is the, um, we already mentioned this a little bit. So the ability to set and grade items to zero. Okay, there is a comment here. This address in, well, I was explaining before. Yeah, so uh, the difference here is that in Gradebook um, 2, 
um, the user is able to select or unselect as many times as he want as he wants but in gradebook one you can only do it uh, once if you uh, choose to um, set ungraded items to zero then that uh, action cannot be uh, undone so yeah so now i will read the comment from steve this is addressing gradebook ng you do this on the gradebook item itself you can also choose something other than zero yeah but you can't undo it okay so yeah slightly different but yeah the, the main point here that was that you were able to undo or undo as, as you wanted um one be person in gradebook ng Okay, yeah, so the, yeah, I guess somehow gradebook knows which grades were actually a zero and which grades were uh, automatic, uh, automatic zero. Not sure how um, the code is, but somehow gradebook knows that because uh, Okay. Yeah, so this maybe we could check how Gradebook 2 is handling that. Maybe something that it could be implemented in, in Gradebook 1 to actually differentiate uh, which zeros were made, let's say, by hand and which zeros were automatically changed. Okay, so moving along. Uh, thanks for the clarification, Steve. Uh, number 12. Yeah, this is about the log. Um, Gradebook 2 keeps a log of the changes that are introduced um, yeah, for almost anything. And Gradebook 1 does only include, um, yeah, le le does include less information. I think Gradebook 1 only includes um, the change in the grades. Um, but Gradebook 2 includes, as you can see in the screenshot, almost everything. It's like a, yeah, like a, like a log. That tells you when an item was added, when it was removed. Uh, actually, I think it can tell you who removed the item. This has actually been pretty useful for us uh, because we had some use cases where uh, instructors sharing the same course but with different, being in different sections because Gradebook 2 does not allow to have different instructors for each section. Um, we, we have had use cases where one instructor from group A has created a structure and then another in instructor from group B have uh, entered the site uh, and then he has removed some of the items just because he thought that, yeah, those were there by <laughs> mistake or something. So we've used the log to actually get some useful information. Not sure if this could be added to, to Gradebook 1. Yeah, thanks for the, there is a use case on the, on the comment. Yeah, useful when you have TAs helping a, an instructor. Yeah, and as I say, yeah, helpful when you have to troubleshoot some accidentally uh, deleted items. Okay, yeah, there is a comment from, from Steve. Gradebook API, API has a great log only, not a log of other events. Yeah, I'm not sure how Gradebook 2 is handling that. We could check it later. Okay, yeah, about the Excel entry mode. Yeah, this is something that the users of Gradebook 2 love. Um, 
Um, yeah, and I think this was addressed by Jeff and Steve and um, one of the main requirements of Gradebook, NG Gradebook Enhancement Project, um, or Gradebook New Generation, was to to have Gradebook entry for, for the items. Um, thanks for the updated screenshot. Cool. Yeah, Gradebook 1 does not have this uh, this option. But Gradebook NG might have it, will have it. Okay, um, I think this is the last one. Um, yeah, Gradebook, Gradebook 1 uh, offers the ability to sort items within a category, but it's not possible to reorder items, I mean reorder uh, categories. Here is a, uh, we took a couple of screenshots uh, where you can see that Gradebook 2, they give you full uh, flexibility on this. You can move uh, items around or you can move categories around. Um, yeah, we, we are aware that this is also pretty useful, especially when you have some, as I said, some sections within a site trying to do different things or things like that so that they can organize uh, their items as they want. Not sure if this will be able to uh, to go into Gradebook 1 sometime. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. from here to the bottom of the document, um, there is more information. Some of it is in Spanish about the calculations. Um, yeah, don't need to go over that. There is also here at the end um, an email that we found very interesting from Jim Mesonote, who was working in uh, at Annie uh, about the dif different differentiations between Gradebook One and Gradebook Two. Um, yeah, so any information, feel free to to add it to to this document. Uh, now I will return to the. Um, main document, and uh, here we have another interesting document. It's uh, the Excel, yeah, I'll paste it also in the chat, and it's here. Okay, so this document is a um, summary of what I think your mic might have cut out. Uh, Mariano, uh, I think your mic turned off. Can't hear anything if you're talking right now. If he's just trying to rejoin, yeah. Yeah, I reconnected because I think that you uh, somehow I lost the audio. Yeah, okay. Uh, pass presenter back to you. All right, thanks. Okay, so I hopefully I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Not sure what happened, but Big Blue Button decided to stop my audio. <laughs> okay, so we are in the Excel document. Can anyone, uh, everybody, hear me? Yep. Can yeah. Great. Now? Okay. Thanks. All right. So I was just saying that the document, the Excel document, which uh, I will paste again. Well, I probably not sure if you hear that, but probably you saw. You saw it on the chat. I'll paste it again in the chat. 
Okay, so the document is, uh, it was done by, it's a um, summary of the main document that we went through, um, yeah, just two minutes ago. Um, this compares Gradebook 1, Gradebook 2, and hopefully um, Steve or Jeff or someone from Gradebook NG can help us um, uh, to, um, yeah, to check the work Gradebook NG um, introduces, well, some of them has been already covered, but it would be excellent if, if they can take a look um, and check the different it items. So I don't think that we need to go over this right now because uh, it's the same things that we saw uh, in the main document. So probably we move along. Um, yeah, but this is something that we will be sharing with the whole community as soon as we get feedback from, from all of you. So yeah, I'll, I'll say it again, but this um, buff was also, uh, we were, uh, the University of Murcia was going to do this job, but we thought that it was interesting to actually do it in a collaborative way to make sure that we go in the right direction. So uh, yeah, any, yeah, your, your help is valuable unnecessary. Okay, so I'll move along in the main document and now I'll pass it or I'll pass it over to uh, Chris because they have another document to share which I'll paste, uh, I'll paste on the on the chat and it's uh, yeah and they can explain it. So Chris uh, probably you need presenter rights yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks to Mariano and Raul for putting that together. That's a great gap analysis. Uh, definitely appreciate you guys sharing that with us. It's going to help a lot going forward and making this decision. And let's see, I need to share my screen. Yeah, no problem. We are help to help. <clears throat> so I put together some statistics based off of our instance of Gradebook 2 and just some statistics related to those differences that Mariana just described between Gradebook 2 and Gradebook 1. So just like to go through them really quickly and at the end, or actually link it right now, I have I will link the, add a link to the queries that I use to grab these statistics so that you guys can run it on your instance as well and might help you make a decision um, or know what items might potentially be problematic moving from, from gradebook one or from gradebook two back to gradebook one. And it's not letting me copy and paste into the chat for some reason. Um, Sorry about that, but I'll go back. I'll get that later. Go back to the presentation here. So firstly, uh, just some notes about where things are found in Gradebook 2 in the database. And all of these items here are the same for Gradebook 1. Gradebook 2 shares most of the, the database schema from Gradebook 1, which is why when you go look in Gradebook 1 after populating items into Gradebook 2, everything mostly looks OK. Uh, just some notes about schema changes. There were some fields added to the gradebook category and gradable object tables. So the gradable objects are for the weights within categories, some items added to category for category order, and some statistics related things added to the gradebook table. And there are also extra tables. So the grade history is a separate table. And there's a separate implementation or an API within gradebook to, to handle all of that stuff. So I don't know if that stuff were to be ported back to Gradebook 1, that could be used as a starting point. Um, so just some basic counts for us. We've got about 51,000 total gradebooks in our system, 87,000 categories, 700,000 items, and a little over 4,000 users. Um, so these sorts of statistics, I'd imagine, are pretty similar, but might, some of them might be pretty different. Uh, so most people stick with the default, which is points 
and hardly anybody uses letter grades. So losing letter grades when moving from gradebook two to gradebook one will not be a concern. And I don't think that it will be much of a concern for anyone. I don't think letter grades is, is too popular of an option. And that email from Jim Mezzanotti actually mentioned letter grades are a bit problematic in the way that they do their scaling um, and mapping from letter grade to points. And in the end, everything is converted to points before the final grade calculation is done. And I believe that's true for both Gradebook 2 and Gradebook 1. It's certainly true for, for Gradebook 2 anyways. So some more interesting stuff here is what category types people are using. So most people, again, stick with the default. However, I broke it down here into number of grade books and number of grade items because a lot of grade books that don't get a whole lot of use are sticking with the default. As you can see here, a lot of people like to make use of weighted categories, which for us means that there's going to be a little bit of a of a shift that has to happen because of the difference in handling weighted categories between gradebook two and gradebook one. So um, we've got about a third of our users using weighted categories. And so here's just the breakdown of how those items are weighted across our system. So the individual weighting is the gradebook two exclusive way of doing weighting and is also the default in gradebook two. And you can set weightings within the category um, regardless of what the points are. So you could have uh, a test worth 100 points and a test worth 500 points, and the test worth 100 points could actually be weighted more within the category than the test worth 500 points. Um, and shown here, a little over half of our users are using that. Um, and a lot of people like to equally weight grade items within Gradebook 2, and this is also a Gradebook 2 exclusive feature where regardless of the max points of all the grade items within that category, you can say these are all weighted equally. Um, so moving to Gradebook 1, that would require some conversion on the user's part to convert them all into an equal max points and then enter them in after the conversion. Um, so I don't know if this is a feature that would easily be added to Gradebook 1, but I think it's something that our users anyway, would definitely be interested in. And 8.6% are using by points, which is the equivalent of how Gradebook 1 handles weighting. Um, yeah, so with the, with the individual, I don't know how many people are actually making use of that. Um, not, these are all just done with very simple SQL queries. My SQL skills are not very advanced, so I couldn't really come up, couldn't do with uh, figuring out how people are using it. Things like how many people have weights that are different than their points would turn out to be. So there are some people using weighted categories when simple categories would have been sufficient, uh, stuff like that. So I'm not sure how much that big blue chunk there is actually using the Gradebook 2 individually weighted functionality and how many just have it because it's the default. So there's some, some further in investigation needed there, sorry. Um, so some points on the, the treating null is zero. So we have number of items and about a quarter of our users are using this treat null as zero functionality. Um, I think the only thing to note there is just that we need to make it clear to the users that that action is not revertible in Gradebook 1. Uh, but of course, the, the functionality does still exist there in Gradebook 1, so that's not too big of a deal. And this is the, the thing, one item that got brought up earlier, which is that unreleased items can be included in the grade in Gradebook 2. And we actually have a lot of items. So if I go back to here, we have 700,000 total items, and we've got about 60, or sorry, we've got 75,000 items that are unreleased but included in the final grade. So that's a little over 10%, which was kind of surprising to me how many people were doing this because I couldn't really think off the top of my head of a reason why you would want to release a grade or not release a grade yet included in the in the final grade calculation. But a lot of our users are doing it and over half of our users actually have at least one case. So I don't know if this is because they're forgetting to release the grade, but they've already included it. I think that might be the case for a lot of them. So I think perhaps some further investigation and maybe reach out to some of the users and ask 
if there is a use case for this, uh, might be warranted. Um, I also have, so that's the end of the presentation there. I have on this here, which is what Mariano linked in the, yeah, SQL queries. Let me see why this is not copying. Okay, it's just up there as an SQL file on, on my Google Drive. Um, probably post that somewhere. Yeah, unfortunately, Google Docs doesn't want to doesn't want to show it. I wonder if I can convert it to a uh, to a text file. Um, but one other thing was there are some in there to run all of these and see how many users are using category types or different grade types, for example. Um, let me see if I can actually convert this to a different type. You could add it to a GitHub gist if you wanted to as well. Okay, so actually, uh, yeah, let me... And then just paste it. on my Windows machine, which I don't do development stuff on. So here we go. So what is the, I haven't used uh, Just, okay. just.github.com. There you go. All right, thank you. And then just say create public bottom. And uh, that's it. Okay, all right. Thank you for that. that. Sure, no problem. Okay, so there's the link there to the uh, GitHub gist of the of the queries, and yeah, so you guys can use that to see what your stats look like. Um, that's all I have as far as the statistics yeah. go. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Great information. We will need to run the queries here also in Murcia and see how they look compared to to Texas and others, okay. yeah. Can I update the, the gist after it's already out there? Or is that just, a, oh, there's revisions on here, okay. I noticed after I did all this that for some of the grade items, I'm not filtering on whether there's two object IDs in there, one's for regular grade items and the other is for the final course grade and I'm not filtering those out in a lot of the stati uh, statistics. I don't know if it makes really a significant difference, but I, I'll go in and change those. I'll pass the presenter back to you. I guess we only have a, a few minutes left here. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. Let me see if I can. Thanks, Chris. I had. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll go. Um, back to to the document. Um, yeah, just moving quickly. Um, the next item will be item will be to start listing the things that could be added to Gradebook to to close the gap of the things that we mentioned before. Probably with the queries, we could see which of them uh, are more important than others, so that the information will be really really helpful. Uh, to decide and to see actually if there is resources or yeah that, that's another <laughs> that's another another thing but uh, yeah probably to make uh, an initial list of the things that will be interesting to have in gradebook one that are already in, in gradebook two and then yeah and then we call we could make decisions and, and move on 
Um, yeah, so I encourage you to yeah to at least hear anything that that you find uh, interesting from the things that you saw uh, before. Uh, also, uh, another important po uh, point: making Gradebook two functional in Sakai eleven. Um, not sure of how people have think about the move, but uh, one thing that we consider here in Murcia was to. Uh, yeah, if um, in the migration to Sakai 11, one thing that we could do was to, for the new courses, provide them with a Gradebook 1, but then leave Gradebook 2 to the uh, remaining courses, the one that were created last academic year or uh, years before. Um, so, yeah, so the first thing that you need to do is to actually make sure that Gradebook Two works with uh, Morpheus. Morpheus. So uh, Juanjo Meroño was uh, doing some quick tests. I also remember that Chris uh, did some also some work on this, um, but we haven't talked about this. So I just pasted here the the information from from Juanjo. But if uh, Chris or anyone else has some other information, it will be great to to have it here also. So Juanjo told me that he was able to. Uh, make it work in Gradebook 2 by uh, using that property, um, yeah, which allows Gradebook 2 to use iframes, if iframes. Um, yeah, but I don't know any of the, of the technical stuff. So if uh, if you want to do more testing or uh, you want to get some more information, Juanjo will probably be the right person to to contact. Um, yeah, and then moving along, yeah, the last point is documentation. Um, yeah, as I said, we don't want to go along on this. Um, yeah, we actually have not made a decision yet. Um, that's something that will probably, uh, yeah, be decided as soon as Sakai 11 is released, as soon as a uh, great book NG is in trunk. I mean, a lot of factors um, are around the, the decision, but um, we wanted to, to take this because we think that it's a really, really important change because we are talking about grades. <laughs> uh, so we wanted to take this with uh, some, some time. So any documentation will be, um, yeah, will be helpful. And we will be providing and sharing all the findings that we that we yeah we find <laughs> doesn't look doesn't sound right but <laughs> yeah uh, all the information that we find we'll be sharing with the community probably um, haven't discussed this with anyone but probably it makes sense to have a confluence page uh, where we can actually link all this information uh, better than a than a Google Doc so that people actually can find it if they search on Google or, or things like that. So any help with that will also be great. Um, yeah, so we are, it's four. I don't want to keep you guys here, but if there is interest, we could probably go um, over a few minutes. So um, yeah, any questions, any, any feedback? Any advice? <laughs> uh, maybe we could kind of create a working group or something like that um, for the uh, universities or institutions or commercial affiliates that are interested in this and try to collaborate as much as possible. And I really appreciate uh, having here people from the new Gradebook uh, project, Gradebook Enhancements. Don't know what's the best name to call it, but Gradebook NG sounds like a good name to me. Um, yeah, um, you guys are an important part of this because probably uh, as soon as Gradebook NG goes in goes into master, probably Gradebook One gets left behind. Not sure, but you probably have the answer, or the community have the answer. Not sure. Yeah. I can I can speak to that, Mariano. So so Gradebook One will remain 
in trunk. It'll remain as an option. Um, the plan as of now is to make Gradebook NG the default, but if institutions still need to use Gradebook 1 for some time, um, that's a possibility. I think we've sort of talked internally that maybe we keep that in for Sakai 11, but then by Sakai 12, Gradebook 1 um, is deprecated. Steve, does that does that align with your your thinking on it? Yep, that's right. So the back end is completely compatible with both. Um, so Gradebook NG is a new front end on the um, Gradebook API. Okay, yeah, so probably this group um, should work towards uh, Gradebook NG rather than Gradebook 1. We, well, because this was, um, yeah, a first um, informal conversation um, and all the information we had so far was uh, related to Gradebook 1 but probably it makes sense that we somehow turn this uh, conversation into um, Gradebook 2 moving from Gradebook 2 to Gradebook NG probably will make sense not sure if uh, Chris or others think like that but probably uh, and actually it would be less uh, mm, traumatic, I think you say. At least you say that in Spanish. <laughs> traumatic for instructors to move from Gradebook um, 2 to Gradebook NG rather than from Gradebook 2 to Gradebook 1, if we think uh, in terms of uh, UI and usability. Absolutely. So, yeah. No, anyone interested in like trying to I create a working group, I mean, or something we can, we can like keep contact or through the mailing list or something like that and try to move this uh, forward. Or does anyone have a decision made about moving from one to the other? Uh, I know we are strongly leaning towards moving to Gradebook NG, uh, hopefully for 11. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we've made a, a definite decision yet, but. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I. If there is no other comments, we will finish here. I will uh, send some information to the uh, dev list and user list, and we could continue from them. Maybe try to um, meet again September or October, something like that. Uh, as soon as Greybook NG is in trunk, we'll probably have more information on uh, we will encourage uh, people to run those queries, people using Gradebook 2 to actually see uh, the, yeah, so we can use that data, data to to decide what's more interesting to, to have in Gradebook 1. And Steve or Jeff, do you have a target date? I know probably you've been asked this a thousand times by now, but... Uh, Not target date, but expected date uh, for having Gradebook NG in, in Master? Uh, yeah, it's any time now. Um, we're just trying to finish off some of the features and um, and then we'll drop it in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Mariana, I put it in the chat, but, you know, I think, I think you're definitely, um, you know, right to say, you know, looking... <clears throat> you know, digging in the, the, into the data and then, you know, seeing what features are most used and, and, you know, with that as one of your tools, you know, working with a working group to decide what, what it makes sense to move forward into Gradebook 1 and then, you know, <clears throat> sorry, into Gradebook NG rather, um, you know, and then doing the, doing the type of usability testing to make sure that, you know, those features are incorporated in the best way that they can. So, 
I think you know a working group and and approaching it in that way is you know is is a great way to go. All right, thanks. Yeah, yeah so we will we we will um, probably try to organize that for uh, late September, October, some somewhere somewhere there. Um, yeah. Um, in the meantime, um, people could yeah try to collect some some data data and do some testing with the new gradebook and things like that. So it would probably make sense to to leave it up for end of September, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anything else? There was a, we had some questions about uh, potentially contributing to the efforts to close the gaps between Gradebook 2 and Gradebook NG, um, perhaps offering up some development time to work on some of the features that are important to us at, at Texas State. Uh, are you guys open to that and how would we go about contributing? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to check uh, here because as I said, like, um, yeah, that's a decision that should come from from above. But um, definitely, if we are going to do the change, we'll probably uh, need to think about trying to close those gaps. Um, but I cannot guarantee anything. But we'll probably think about that about trying to contribute some some work. But as I said, like I mean, that's not something that it's on on my hands. Yeah, no, I was wondering more about uh, more about us contributing. Yeah. So I don't know if Jeff or Steve know more, or if any other institutions are interested in. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess what's been our thinking is just where where we are in terms of, um, you know, in the cycle, and you know, like Steve said, we're, you know, we're we're wrapping up, um, you know, some of some last sort of features and there'll be a lot of bug fixing. So um, just in terms of the timing of the release of 11, uh, we want to make sure that we're not putting in more big features, you know, that sort of rearrange the UI that we've done, you know, the better part of a year kind of doing usability testing on. Um, so Steve, do you want to speak more to, time, to timing and, and release? Um, yeah, so, so <coughs> I guess that the, the, oh, I can hear an echo, I hear an echo, I feel that really weird, that's better. Um, um, yeah, so I guess yeah, Sakai so 11, 11 is kind of, kind of um, uh, wrapping up wrapping for, up for features. features, and adding new things now is probably a bit of a risk, um, and I think, you know, we've had a bit of a discussion about some of these features that have come in, and I think a, um, a, a bit more research might need to go into how they're being used and um, how they can best be represented in in the new interface that we're providing. Um, doing a bit of research and you know perhaps targeting those for eleven. I think it's probably a bit late to be getting new features in. Sorry, targeting those for twelve. It's getting, probably getting a bit late to uh, contribute some major new functionality in, and especially a lot of those things that we've seen today, they're very back-end heavy. So whilst you might have a UI that, that can control it, um, unless it's all really tight in the back-end, um, I can see a bit of risk there in trying to squeeze that into 11. Okay, definitely. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, but uh, for 12, I mean, if we wanted to contribute some efforts to 12, I guess that would be after after NG goes into master, and I guess that's just the same process that it is for regular pull requests then at that point for Sakai? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So at the moment, it's, so at the, moment um, the code is just sitting in my own GitHub, my own GitHub um, um, just because that's, when we, that's where we started it. So we are going to move that over really soon. Um, and I mean, yeah, you can certainly check it out and um, and have a look at it right now. Right now. Oh, thank yeah, you. I, 
Yeah, and I think I think this you know this conversation is is really useful. Looking at the data is very useful, and I, I think it's sort of continuing that you know as Mariano suggested, sort of in a working group. And you know we've always um, you know sort of seen this as uh, sort of a first <laughs> a first phase of gradebook, sort of getting the gradebook one users over getting you know this major overhaul of the interface done, and as that sort of settles out. You know, as people are moved over, we sort of get rid of the bugs. We settle, you know, out that user experience. Um, you know, then doing kind of the thoughtful work for for twelve um, through a community project. If Neil was here, he would be saying farm um, <laughs> and enjoying it. Uh, so you know, having a project around that to uh, to get those other features in. Yeah, I'm I'm all for it, and um, you know, I know uh, you know a lot of people would be interested in participating. So. Yeah, it yeah, does sound, it sound like a farm like a project. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, so um, I hear some echo. Me too. Me too. Me too. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, thanks everyone for participating. I don't know if, the, if there is, I mean, if there is more questions, we can for sure keep on going. But if uh, if not, as Neil always said, a motion that we adjourn this meeting. <laughs> um, yeah, and we could continue the discussion through mailing list and then try to promote another uh, birds of a feather discussion probably or something like that and then see if we can start this uh, working group um, in September. Uh, do we want to use the, there is a great book too, dev list that doesn't get a whole lot of use. Maybe we could uh, use that for a lot of these discussions. Uh, yeah. I, do you know if it was moved to Aperio? Oh, that's right. I forgot about I, that. I, I don't know. Sure. Probably we could create one. I was thinking that also uh, at least the first emails should go to the uh, dev list uh, so that people uh, that are, yeah, not that aware, but I mean, we could copy that and we could have one for, yeah, for like uh, working, you know, anyone. Yeah, I, th I don't think that that would be a problem to set up a mailing list for this purpose during a specific period of time. Um, I think Neil would be cool help us with, with that. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check that also. If the, um, dev, if the uh, great book to mailing list is not, um, in a period that or already, I will ask them if they can create a new one. And we will make sure that we copy the dev list at, at least during the first emails and for the important information. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. There is a comment on the chat that Great Book 2 dev was merged to Shakai dev. Yeah. Uh, probably, if we are going through through this process, uh, it would make sure it would probably make sense to have a different list for that. I'm not sure. I'll check. I'll check with Neil. <clears throat> All right. So, um, if you happen to have vacation soon, enjoy them. <laughs> um, hope to see you around. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks yeah, everyone thanks for attending. Thanks, Al. Thanks, you guys on the three email and stuff. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.